right, guten Tag, everyone. Uh, here we have the brand new BMW i5 M60. 60 here we suppose stands for maybe 600 horsepower because we have about 596 of them, I think, and just over 600 foot-pounds of torque. So very fast car. It slots in right underneath uh, the upcoming uh, M5. And right now this is the most technologically advanced BMW you can buy. So latest and greatest, and uh, we're here to show you what's, what's new with it. First off, style. It looks quite a bit different from the outgoing version. Uh, that car, to my eyes, was um, absolutely beautiful. Um, if, you, if you remember, or maybe we'll flash in a picture of that, it was an exercise in line flow and automotive design. So you'd have a line that would pick up here, follow the, the silhouette of the car around the Hofmeister kink, and then run down at this body line into the body all the way around. We've lost this here. They have a very different surfacing strategy. Still have a Hofmeister kink. By the way, BMW wasn't the first vehicle to use this. That was actually a Cadillac. I'm sad to say as a German, but hey, we adapted it. So um, anyways, uh, it's 21 inch wheels, quite uh, dizzy design, uh, busy design, excuse me. Prominent cladding underneath to reduce the height of the car. And in the front, we have a typical BMW grill design uh, with the electric BMW emblem. Uh, sadly, we don't have a trunk or front trunk underneath this bonnet, uh, partially due to this being uh, the CLAR2 platform that shares its underpinnings um, with uh, the ICE version of this. So the upcoming M5 or lower BMW 5 Series um, use, make use of the same general structure, uh, but fit an ICE drivetrain underneath. Um, one thing that likely results from this dual use is the weight of this vehicle. We have um, this weighs in at about 5,250 pounds, which is quite heavy for this class. For reference, a Tesla Model S, not the Plaid, is about 700 pounds uh, lighter than this. That's an all aluminum body structure, but a BEV only focused design, right? So this is quite a bit heavier. Um, mix up for it with horsepower. Tesla, I suppose, uh, has similar power numbers, but we do go from zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds and uh, have about 250 miles of range, depending on how you drive it. German companies sometimes underrate battery power, battery range, uh, etc. So we'll see what it does in the real world. Um, starts at about $84,000. This one is a little bit more, has a couple extra uh, specs to it. So I believe it's in the 90s, a uh, lot of money but you also get a lot of technology for this, right? So um, with that, I think we'll go into the interior and check it out. And we'll start the passenger side. I'll get in on the driver's side. I've got the seat set to my position. I'm about 6'4", and I can sit behind myself. I do package very well for that height, but I'm very comfortable in the front and in the back. First thing you notice is my phone is going off. Other than that, we have the typical new BMW uh, design language in the interior that you also see on i7. So we've had that car with the crystals, iDrive system. This infotainment is very intuitive and nice. I think this is probably second best behind Tesla in the industry. Um, really like it, very responsive. They must have a good processor in there. Um, but you see it's a nice carbon fiber, all nice materials. Uh, if, if you look at the build quality, you can push on things. It's quite um, sturdily put together, gives a nice quality perception. If you slam the doors, it feels nice and solid. So um, that's really the one takeaway I have from this BMW. Like it feels like it's properly put together. So if you're into that kind of thing, that's... Um, 
that's the takeaway. Um, if you look around, and we'll get into the driving dynamics of this in just a little bit. Um, there's a lot of vehicles nowadays, 600 horsepower, just as fast as this, even though this feels like a rocket ship at three and a half seconds to 60. Um, but the quality is probably what it sets it apart from something like a Tesla Model S or other, um, even the uh, Mercedes EQE that would be up against this. Um, but if you look in the back, it's not quite i7, but still very nice materials. You have your sunroof, nice leather. I'm not sure if this is a real leather or a faux, but that only, it's probably a leatherette. Yeah, it looks, it, it looks to be, but it's still very nice, soft touch. Uh, and actually you're hard pressed to find anything that's uh, not either a nice soft touch or carbon fiber. Um, the only real cost cutting that I can see on the interior materials from i7 is probably these uh, intimidation laser cut Bowers and Wilkinson speaker covers. They're plastic. I love when these are laser cut aluminum. Uh, you touch them, you'll see that's just a ejection mold component. But other than that, very beautiful interior. And um, now we're going to see if it drives just as beautiful as it looks. And is it the ultimate driving machine? the car and um, let's go through this infotainment system see how we can put this vehicle into its fastest mode uh, we have my modes here which brings up our menu we have personal efficient sport expressive relax so these are um, BMW presets that they find would be um, beneficial uh, for the customer to have here you can set dampers, acceleration, uh, cruise control to your preferences. This is the sport preset. So here we should have the full 594 horsepower. And um, but to find out, I suppose if you pull this boost paddle, you can put this car into launch control. Not right now because we have a wall in front of us, but we'll go test it out. So very silent, isolated from the high frequency undulations of a broken pavement, just like the i7. Again, a lot of the same underpitting. So I expect that it has a lot of this i7 luxury limousine comfort. Um, even in sport mode, I mean, we're going slow, but this pavement is quite broken. Feels pretty good. This vehicle does have rear steering from our friends at ZF and they also supply air suspension but only on the rear. The front of this vehicle has a conventional coilover setup so that's rather unique in general but it feels great. So boost mode Yeah, it's rapid. It's rapid for sure. But you have to say that is nothing special anymore, right? There's a lot of EVs with five, six hundred horsepower. There's Model S plaids and sapphires around. So it's it's the party trick that it still makes you smile every time, but it's not special. And me driving this car around, going over the specs, thinking about yesterday, I was wondering what is special about this i5. And it's, it's, it's an all-rounder. It's fast, it drives pretty good. It's not the sports car of BMW. You'd buy something smaller for that. But it's an Autobahn Cruiser. Um, which begs the question, if this is supposed to be an Autobahn Cruiser and to just get from A to B in style and comfort fast, have a little bit of fun, then if you were in Germany, where I'm from, 
you drive like that. <laughs> and let's say this car goes 130 miles an hour as spec. Your range on the Autobahn would be 50 to 60 miles. So that kind of defeats the purpose right, from a German perspective. But sometimes you have to think about where the vehicle was designed to understand its purpose and why it turns out the way that it does. And this is a car with the rear steer and the long wheelbase, the way it's set up. It's very stable at high speeds. Right? So it, it would be a beautiful cruise at Audubon speeds while it lasted. So, but it can't do that. In the American market, it's not much of um, a consideration. Right, because here we have, we're restricted to 70 or 80 miles an hour, depending on where you are. Um, but still, it doesn't have a whole lot of miles for that. And that probably goes back to one, they don't publish a CD. So that's probably not a very efficient aerodynamic design. And two, we're at over 5,000 pounds for this class of vehicle. So it's quite heavy gonna pull in over here to hit some broken pavement um, this want to see how well the suspension dampens out let's say pothole right usually German BMWs they're all one and done so when you damp it's just one dampening process and there's no secondary undulations so if we drive over the broken pavement it does seem like that if we chuck it a little bit around a turn, uh, you can tell there's, it's probably due to the weight, but there's a secondary wallow just a little bit. As you tip in the steering wheel rather quickly, the weight sets on the suspension, but it's not exactly damp. So there's going to be a little bit of motion. And what that does as your, your suspension works, it dynamically changes camber and toe so that it, it affects a little bit how you steer, right? A, a, a very precise sports car, as you go handle through the turns, does one and done, controls the body mass so that you uh, don't have um, steering inputs by the body moving on top of the chassis, right? This is a BMW, but not one of the smaller ones from which they have gotten the ultimate driving machine reputation. Well, this throttle ped pedal is very, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my good, I'm just tipping into the gas. There is, this is the, an extremely sensitive pedal. It's interesting to, to observe all these OEMs in times of electrification, how they're trying to set themselves apart, right? Because it's difficult. Everybody can make tons of power and you know, all the other aspects of vehicle technology or, or suspension, etc., are developed technologies, high maturity, and there's things like Giga Castings coming in and other stuff that OEMs do. But from a customer perspective, to do something different, it's difficult times for OEMs, right? And here we have, uh, it's, it's a very cohesive package. Nothing is lacking, but nothing really stands out. It's an interesting interior, you got some crystals uh, bestowing the, the dashboard and carbon fiber, very nice. But I think it has to be at $90,000. All right, final thoughts. Um, this BMW has lots of tech and that makes it more of a bruiser than a sports car. Um, it's a car with lots of strengths, but nothing that it ultimately excels way above its competition. Um, enjoyable experience, very luxury car. It's a beautiful A to B car. Um, and an all-rounder if that's what you need and you need space for family and friends and you got two kids and a dog, this will do the job. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. See you next time.